All right, well, so as you all know, these were some earthquakes in recent years that have really changed everything about how we understand earthquakes. A magnitude 9 uh, that happened in a place where only an 8.6 would have been expected by probabilistic seismic hazards. These are examples of what are called black swan events. I'm going to start out with passing along a book recommendation Tom Heaton and some others have made to me. This is a book by Nassim Taleb. The idea is that as Europeans uh, formed their opinions in the early days, they only saw white swans. Finally, they went over to Australia and saw that there were also black swans. So this changed everything in their perception. What are we talking about when we talk about a rare event? Generally speaking, something less than 1% probability. But we're actually getting into events that are real outliers, more like 1 in 10,000. These are the ones that really matter, that change everything. How can we, as scientists, be ready for these black swan type events? It's difficult, well, and it's also especially difficult for the public. Here in this section of the Sendai coast that was hit by this tsunami, the expectation was a three meter tsunami. Here you can see from the bird on the building, it was a 14 meter tsunami. Okay, so as scientists, what can we do? What can we do to help? We can do, in our field, we can do societally relevant science in a very special way. We can study aspects of earthquake behavior we can learn about these complex natural systems. We can discover new things about earthquake system behavior and explore whatever aspects of that behavior are predictable. We can understand better earthquakes and other potentially disastrous natural events. We can use technology to react quickly and get accurate, timely information. And we can provide that information to emergency managers and to the public. We have to do that jargon free so that people get what we're talking about. So when the big one hits, my recommendation is during the event response, do not speculate. That's a big mistake. Use data, rely on your data and know its limitations. Know your system's limitations so that you don't get out on a limb and make a mistake. Okay, so moving on, how do we discover new things? I would just say notice things that are different than your expectations and other people's expectations. It may be subtle or obvious, it may be large or small. Don't ignore it if it's unusual. If it's different, pay attention. Um, so, and, and you know, a corollary to that, if it's the same old thing, move on. Find something that's really different and study that. <clears throat> Here's some examples from work I've done on these last couple years, these earthquakes. This is along the Enriquillo Fault. Andrea showed the Wallace Creek site along the San Andreas Fault. This is an example where, using the LIDAR data, I found what I felt was an offset channel. It was much less clear than Wallace Creek because of this recent erosion that you see in the foreground in the lower right. This site is called Clinette, and here you see Carol Prentice, who was the head of our team in Haiti. But we went and field checked it. Sure enough, it's an offset channel. Very unexpected. We found this after lots of looking at imagery. But I want to recommend it's not enough to do the imagery analysis and interpretation. You've got to go to the field. It's really important to do that. Field data almost always radically changes our understanding. And so um, if you're going to always just sit in your office, watch out because your results, I predict, are going to be vague or worse yet, incorrect. We found that the Enriquillo fault dips to the south. It's purely left lateral. This was counter to what we were finding from data from instruments far away. Another recent example of an unexpected result in the El Mayar Kukapa rupture, it jumped, it ruptured along the Pescadores Fault in the lower right, jumped 11 kilometers and then kept going. That's more than twice the value that's used as, as an extreme value in probabilistic seismic hazard maps. Here you see Roger, I hope he's here. Um, the idea here is that when we go to the field, we have an opportunity to talk to people and learn from them, people that witnessed the rupture. Rosario saw the rupture going the opposite direction to what was expected by all of us scientists, but he saw it. Um, so in conclusion, we consider the implications of these outlier rare events very analytically. We have to communicate that risk to the public without dumbing it down. We've got to find and scrutinize the unexpected, and that's how to make discoveries. I showed you these examples. I want to emphasize that we've got to put our science to work in real time and always ground truth your data, field check your imagery interpretations. That's all I have time for. Thanks.